This is Peter talking to believers in Rome and beyond who are in the middle of persecution. They're all over Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, so on and so on. He's talking to a, a widespread out group of people. At this point in the Roman Empire, they started to come under persecution. It started to come up against them, and, and things have gotten more difficult for, for the believers in Christ. And he starts out for, in 1 Peter chapter 2, starting in verse 9. But you're not like that, for you are a chosen people. Why don't you let that sink in for a second? You are a chosen people. You were a kickball? You were a kickball back in elementary school? That was good times. See, I lived back in the era before teachers learned how to be nice. You go out for recess, and they're like, it's kickball time. And then meant joy and festivity. And they line you up on the wall, and they pick two people, and be like, pick the teams. I'm not the most athletically coordinated person. Okay? I'm not that guy. I'm not a jo- I wasn't a jock in high school or college or even elementary school. I'm bigger, and I can kick hard, or at least I could then. And I master the art of kicking the kickball, because if you kick far, you don't have to run hard. And it's really kind of a, a thing you got to figure out when you play kickball. And you can kick hard, you don't have to run hard. So, there, you master, now, if you remember, there's like, there's the side kick, which is very effective. There's the front kick, and if you get right here, you can get some serious air. It's really a science. We need to start a league. <laughs> Bring kickball back. There's leagues. We need to join one. And so, I was one of the kids that usually got picked first. I never really went through that horrifying experience of being the last kid picked for kickball. You remember that? If you've ever been picked last, you remember that feeling? You're like, oh man, clumsy George just got picked and I didn't get picked. Tiny Tina just got picked and she can't even kick the ball. The ball's bigger than she is. The last one. No! Not me! <sighs> but when you get picked first, it's like, I want you on my team. You're like, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm on the team. We're going to win. We're taking you down. You're all talking smack. The kids are the last. They're like scuffing the ground. I hope someone picks me soon. It'll be the last. You are a chosen people. You got picked first off the line. God looks at, you, looks at you and says, you are chosen. You're mine. I want you, Joel. You're on my team. You're on my team. You are a chosen people. You're not, you're not the leftovers. You're not the cast-offs. You're not the strange ones. You're the one that got picked first. Candy, you're on my team. Ashley and Ashley, you're on my team. Still the same line of sight. How do you get the first of and second of in the exact same chair? <laughs> You're on my team. You are a chosen people. And when you're picked and you feel special, it makes a big difference. You act different. You are chosen. And what I love about this is you are a chosen what? People. People. See, it's no fun to get picked for kickball and be like, all right, I picked Caleb first. All right, dude, you're the team. The rest of us are going to play against you. <laughs> like, woo. I'm all by myself here. That doesn't feel good. You are a chosen people. Your identity now is that you are a chosen people. You are a group of chosen. You are in community with other people. You're not just solo out there on a pedestal by yourself getting stuff thrown at you. You are in a community of people. It's why relationships are so important. It's why spiritual family is so important. It's why church home is so important. You need to be a part of the community of people. Because you're a chosen person. That's right. You're not out there spinning by yourself. You are a chosen person. You can pick. Oh. You're special. You're special. And then he continues. You are royal priests. Okay, so priests in our culture don't carry the same weight as it did in the culture back then. When you live in a society where everyone believes in God or a God or some kind of God, 
And the way that this all religion structure is set up is that the priest is the one who works for God, is the intermediary between you and God, is the special people that have the entrance and can go into the temple to worship God and to pray to God and have a, a, a special line in, they're pretty important people. Because they're the ticket between you and eternity, between you and the divine, that person. We still sometimes put pastors on this, and it's a sin. Pray for me. I'm glad to pray for you, but my prayers are no more effective than anyone else's. You are royal priests. See, it's like if you were to go to America now. Now, I'm afraid that some of you would get on television if you went to America now. Because they pick two kinds of people in America now. I read a blog post about what happens. You go into the, into the big stadium and they're like, I have 11,000 people. Do you think that all 11,000 people get, to be, get picked on by Simon? No. Then he's tent set up with judges. And you walk into that tent, and you sing for about five, ten seconds, or and you get like three of you together. And they're like, ain't go, ain't go, okay, you can go to the next round. Most people don't get anywhere close to seeing Randy, or Simon, or the guest judge, or the other girl, whatever her name is. I don't know why I don't know her name, but I don't know. 